So I love new music, everything from uh, uh, Skrillex to Delta Ray. <laughs> if you know who they are, that's pretty good. Um, but how do you find the music you like? Because some services support some bands and other services don't. And there's lots of new features and new things coming out. Like uh, Beats uh, came out with a streaming music service a couple of weeks ago. And so I, I'm a Spotify guy. My brother's an RDO guy. Uh, other people in my life are Pandora people. And that, how do you find all the music and share it with your friends in, in a way that matters? Well, bop.fm is going to show us how they're making music really fun again for everybody. So who are you? I'm Shazad Deradia. I'm the CEO of bop.fm. So um, I've spent my entire career in tech and startups, uh, broadly defined. So started my career in venture capital, worked for Row Ventures for a couple of years, um, right out of college. Uh, and then crossed over to the dark side and joined uh, Kayak.com as an early employee. I was uh, one of the first marketing hires there. Uh, I just music acquisition and product. And then uh, flipped coast and came out west and joined a, a startup called Bill Shrink, where I did product there as well. Uh, that's where I, I use it. So. Yeah, you do? Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so that's where I met my co-founder, actually, and then uh, after we sold to MasterCard, I uh, took some time off and found out that uh, my co-founder, Stefan, was, uh, was free, he came back and decided to start the company we've been talking about back when we were at Bill Shrink. Very cool. Um, usually when I see people go in, a, or companies uh, go in a crowded spaces, and music is certainly a crowded space with companies with tens of millions of dollars of investment, right? And there's mm -hmm. Spotify, uh, Pandora, to Beats. I mean, I, this is a crowded space. Yep. Um, usually I ignore it <laughs> because uh, how are you going to bring something new to the table that's interesting and it can build a business in such a credit space of travels another one uh, there's a few of these credit spaces why are you so uh, crazy to try to <laughs> want to go into this crowded space yeah no I'm, I'm glad you asked it's, the, it's a common question um, you know, believe it or not, we actually like the fact that it's crowded. We leverage that. The fact that it's crowded is what's created this pain point for users, right? So, um, you know, I use RDO, my friend uses Spotify, my brother uses Beats, uh, someone else uses Xbox Music, someone else uses, you know, MySpace. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a pain in the ass that all these different services are all interoperable, not interoperable with each other. And so if I want to share a song with a friend, I have to make sure they use the same music service as me, which is ridiculous. If I wanted to share a picture with you, I don't have to make sure that you use the same JPEG viewer as me, right? Uh, so we want to do the same with music, make it easily shareable again and actually have all of it in one place. So you don't have to be spread across all these different apps. So, so what, uh, bop.fm isn't a competitor to Spotify or RDO, right? You don't go to the Led Zeppelin and the Delta Rays and all the music acts and get their music and distribute it to your users, do you? No, that's correct. We don't do that. So okay. we're, we're a meta layer on top, right? So very similar to how Kayak came in and saw this pain point where users were doing between 8 and 10 different travel searches on 8 or 10 different websites before making a booking. And then they were doing that all manually. Uh, and they came in to kind of sit on top of the lightweight layer and be that user-friendly, you know, end-user interface to, for travel search. We are doing the same thing for music. We're lightweight layers that's on top of all these different services, intelligently mediates between them and helps drive them subscribers and, uh, and upgrades. Now, uh, some, uh, this is the problem with music services. Like, even Spotify only has a few million users, right? Yep, it, it's, that's correct. It's not... Uh, something that everybody in society is on Spotify. Exactly. Right? And Spotify. now there's a few hundred pe thousand people on Beats, probably growing pretty fast, and a few hundred, you know, f a few million people on Amazon services, and then a lot of people on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So the, YouTube is actually the biggest music service today, right? And it's not even really a music service. You can't really do the, you know, playlisting that uh, is very seamless of a music service. You can't do um, you know, play a song and actually navigate and queue up another song while an existing song is playing. And yet YouTube, you know, eight, eight or nine out of the top ten most viewed videos on YouTube are all music videos. And uh, it, it's kind of de facto the largest music service, right? Yeah. Uh, but the other ones, you're right. I mean, if you're in the echo chamber that is the Bay Area, you might think that Spotify has won. And they've obviously done a great job. Uh, but 
you know, the last reported number they have of registered users is about 6 million users. What about the other 300 million people, right? So, and that's just in the United States. And that's, that, that's in the US, yes. Yeah. So they've actually done um, you know, better in other countries than in the US because there's more competition in the US, right? Yeah. So, uh, and you know, case in point, Beats just launched a couple of weeks ago, and there's many more services that are teeing up to launch as well. Yeah. Also, uh, a lot of people uh, have a pretty good music library on something like iTunes. Um, does that translate into bop.fm, or are you really only for the internet streaming uh, places where you get music today? Today, we have a pretty strong streaming focus, although we actually allow watching and buying as well. But what we have not yet done, although it's on our roadmap, is also leverage the library that's local to your computer and be a, uh, a player for that, a remote for that as well. That's actually on our roadmap too. Because okay. uh, ultimately what our goal is, is to uh, make, you know, at the, the streaming industry has kind of made own music ownership be a bit old school now, right? Yeah. But so people are now renting music rather than owning it. Yeah. But now that they don't own their music anymore, we want to still empower them to feel like they own their music data. Right, so if I'm in Spotify or if I'm another service, I'm locked in. If then you know, Spotify goes out of business or audio gets picked off by Apple and shuts down, then you know, I lose all my data. I lose my, my playlist, my catalog, et cetera. We don't want that to happen. So as music medium changes over time, the ability to access my data should not. Yeah, I, and that's a good point. I have a lot of uh, playlists in Spotify, some of which I've made, some of which I've collected and I'm a pretty advanced user, a lot of people don't know that you can you know, get pl playlists. They, they, you know, a new user to Spotify, they have to figure that out. Mm -hmm. they, you know, that you can't, you, you don't just use it to search for you know, Led Zeppelin and start playing Led Zeppelin. You can actually get a, you know, Coachella playlists or a, make a playlist of all the rock bands that you love from the 60s. Right? Sure. Um, can I bring those playlists into bop.fm? That's something that is actually also on our roadmap uh, okay. very soon. Um, we do want to facilitate this you know, interoperability, and so that is definitely coming very soon. Yeah. And how, uh, do I pay for bop.fm? Because at Spotify, there's a free version, and then I, I pay 10 bucks a month to get the full unlocked with no ads yep. version, right? Do I pay you guys? How do you guys make a business out of this? So we don't charge the consumer today. So the idea is that we are your best client for streaming music, right? So um, you know we have a free tier, like a free anonymous tier of music supported by YouTube and SoundCloud uh, that, of course, still monetizes for that industry because YouTube's ads get passed through, right? Uh, but then we also, uh, you know, encourage users to upgrade to the premium services that Spotify and RDOs of the world uh, because of the same reasons that they do that today, right? So better audio quality, lower ad load, and mobile and offline playback. So we're trying to further the streaming wave, and when we do that, we're incented, right? So we yeah. often have affiliate program agreements with these various services, Spotify, RDO, Deezer, as well as iTunes, Amazon, Google Play. Uh, to be able to actually get the referral revenue for driving that tr uh, transaction for them. Before we get a demo, uh, does this work on, I, I noticed you brought a, a laptop, mm -hmm. uh, obviously it works on, on uh, the Mac. I does, hope so. Does it work on Windows? Does it work on my mobile phone? So tell me where I would get bop.fm. Sure. It works on web and mobile web today. Um, so we're pri primarily a web product today. Um, if I were to share a link with you and you clicked it on your phone, it would work for you on mobile web as well, but we plan to enhance the mobile experience through uh, native apps later this year as well. Okay. And let's see it and then we'll uh, dive in a little bit more and ask some more stupid questions. Sure. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the idea is that we index all these different music services, right? And so uh, we know with a high degree of precision exactly which song, uh, for any given song, exactly which services it's available in. And we've aggregated all this information. So now, if I were to send you, say, a Spotify link and you didn't use Spotify, yeah. then you would see this, right? Yeah. You wouldn't be able to play a single second of that song without being forced to download Spotify, right, register, sign up, et cetera. Yeah. And that's if you're even in a country that has Spotify. Right. If you're in Canada, then you're completely out of luck, right? Yeah. They don't have it there. Uh, whereas instead, let's say that I receive a bop.fm link to this song. And you know, I'm a first time user of bop, never heard it before, of a bop before, but I get this link in an email or in a tweet or something. Now, when I click this link, I get taken to the canonical home for this song on the internet, meant to be universally accessible, no matter who I am, what country I'm in, what device I'm on, what music service I use. I so, see you put lyrics there, and you have very, uh, a few different versions of this song. 
Um, no, so these are recommended songs. So oh, these okay. are other songs uh, that we recommend if you like this song. Uh, but what happens here is that we automatically detect when you land on this page that you are a Spotify user and that the song by American Authors is available in Spotify in your country and on your device. And hence, you're able to seamlessly play back the track yeah. using your existing Spotify account without having to jump through any hoops or hurdles. Now what if I'm not on Spotify? Can, does it go to YouTube and try to find a version of the song? Or? Well, I'm glad you asked. So if you weren't on Spotify, then we would seamlessly fall back to another source that's available for you. In this case, for example, we'd be playing the Vivo music video through YouTube. Or we would play it through SoundCloud, for example. So to kind of further illustrate the point, let's say that someone sends you a link to this Drake song, Trophies. Now, even though I'm a Spotify user, this song is not available on Spotify. Uh, and that's okay because we automatically detect that and we'll start playing it through YouTube. And if you weren't, you know, say you were in a country like Germany where the Vivo licensing for this video wasn't available on YouTube, then we would seamlessly fall back to another service, like say, playing it through SoundCloud. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so you, you can play music that isn't even on Spotify uh, through this interface and then let me share it. Now, can I build a playlist and have all the fun that I would have in Spotify in here? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, for example, not, not only do we allow you to be able to play the song, but you can also purchase the song uh, from any of the major download stores because yeah. we also deep link into not just iTunes, but also Amazon and Google. And now, if you wanted to actually add... Are there ever price differences between those three services? Occasionally there are, yes. So, Do you um, ever show that, that the, it's, it's a dollar on Amazon, but it's a dollar ninety nine on Google or something like that? Or? So that's another thing that's actually part of a roadmap for the exact same reason that you described. So, okay. you know, iTunes typically doesn't do the discounting very much, but Amazon and Google do a bit more. And so as a result, we can actually surface that to the user. And of course, people tend to have different platforms, iOS versus Android, and have different preferences yeah. on where they want to download the music from. So we can surface all of that and remember that preference for that user. Are you able to show that th there's a higher quality uh, version on Spotify, for instance, available to play uh, compared to like YouTube, which is probably a lower quality? So we're not surfacing that uh, per se within a surface uh, service because you know through like the APIs that we're integrating, there's a standard quality that comes through. Uh, but like for example with YouTube, so we will always default to the best quality version with the highest uh, degree of not only accuracy but also usually coming from official channels like the artist channel or the Vivo channel, and those tend to be higher quality, tend to be an HD video, for example, tend to be higher quality audio, Sim and then we will often default to YouTube over SoundCloud for the same reasons that one, it tends to be higher quality, and two, it monetizes better, right? SoundCloud doesn't quite yet really monetize for the artist the way that YouTube does. So we kind of take all those into account in our matching algorithm. That's cool. And, and you asked about playlisting, so yeah. if you like this song, you can very simply add to a playlist like this, Okay. and once you add to a playlist, you know, here's an example of a, a playlist that I have. Um, you can actually um, you know, listen to my Slow Jams playlist if you want. Um, and what we're doing here is we're intelligently mediating between songs, as, between services, as we move from one song to the next. So this song might only be available on YouTube, the next one might only be available on SoundCloud, next one is on RDO, and if I have an RDO account, it'll play through that. So again, the beauty of it is that I don't have to keep track of where my music is, I just know I'll be able to play it. And you know, more and more we're seeing windowing happening, right? Yeah. Where like Spotify did an exclusive with Led Zeppelin and you know, um, Adams for Peace, uh, Tom York aren't available on Spotify anymore, the Beatles are only on iTunes, Drake launches new stuff on YouTube and SoundCloud first before anywhere else. As a user, as a listener, am I supposed to keep track of where all my favorite yeah. artists are? You don't have to. Can I ask it to bias toward a video version? Yes, so um, right now it does so implicitly. So we actually uh, recognize your preference and save it for you when you choose a service. Okay. Uh, but ultimately we'll also expose that more prominently so you can have video version or non-video version. And then, uh, you know, because of course if I'm in like a low bandwidth environment and I want to be able to, you know, have a better speed, then I might prefer the non-video version, for example, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I was just thinking at home, I have a, a big screen with a stereo system on it, so I'd love to shove uh, the video versions around. You don't uh, support AirPlay, well, the, the Mac itself does, so I could mm -hmm. AirPlay, could I AirPlay this over to uh, an Apple TV and show the video? Yeah, so any, any um, you know, if the device, if the browser, if 
the device supports being uh, transferring to you know another display, another screen, then we're just another app on the browser, right? Yeah. Cool. Um, why why would I stay with uh, just Spotify alone, or or the new Beats Music service, or Amazon? What what doesn't this do that maybe one of those services does do? Um, well, so admittedly today, you know, we've been out for about two months now, so we're still in an early beta. Uh, we, did, we did our public launch uh, in early December, um, which is really well received, but, you know, we are still early from a feature standpoint. So, for example, we don't have native mobile apps yet today. Uh, we, we work on mobile web, but, you know, native mobile apps are coming soon. Um, you know, today, for example, Spotify and some of these other services will have, you know, offline mode in their native mobile apps, and since we don't have a native app, we don't have that experience yet, uh, but it's coming, and so you know we'll we'll be able to you know support those kinds of features. You probably time. don't show me uh, some of the social. St Spotify shows me what my friends are listening to right now as a rolling kind mm -hmm. of list, and it also shoves that over to Facebook. So uh, on Facebook, I can see what kind of music my son's listening to, for yep. instance. Um, you don't do that, do you? We, you don't shove uh, the, the social data like that around, do you? So we actually did a really interesting version of that in our uh, in our private beta, the first version of this. Uh, we just haven't migrated over to the new version. But what we actually did and have the capability, and, and we still do on the back end, is we when you connect with, say, Facebook, for example, we'll go out and mine your listening history across all of your friends, regardless of the underlying music service. So we actually had like a wall, a discovery wall, where you can see what your, your friends are listening to and sharing, and it doesn't matter what music service they're on. So yeah. I might have uh, you know, put a Spotify link on your wall, someone else might have sent you a YouTube link in a tweet, someone else might have done an audio link on your, your timeline, for example, uh, and we pull all that in, and you know, we don't even bother surfacing to you where the original source came from, because you don't care. We just yeah. translate it into a way that you can actually play it. And so that was something that was part of our private beta, and we'll actually be uh, relaunching that feature as part of like a social feed in the future that uh, really enables that for you. So you don't actually have to be on the same music service as all your friends. No, that's cool. Um, anything else I need to know about this? Because it seems pretty pretty straightforward and lets me play music from everywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know, it's funny because yeah, there is something that you should know about it. Um, what we just discussed is the consumer-facing applications uh, behind uh, the, the, the company. Mm -hmm. But we also have two other um, you know, aspects of the company that we didn't cover. Uh, one is a uh, you know, publisher or partner facing, and one is uh, music industry facing. Yeah. So the same technology we have for aggregating all these different services and seamlessly playing them through uh, bop.fm, we've syndicated out to major partners. So for example, we're embedded site-wide on Rap Genius uh, as the exclusive default player. So you know, Rap Genius is of course a top 100 website with over 25 million monthly uniques, and we're embedded on every page. So now yep. when you land on a lyric site, you can actually play back that song using a service that's relevant to you while you view the lyrics. And it's a really kind of no-brainer for publishers because do I embed a Spotify link? Well, then six million of my uh, potential people in the U.S. can play it. Do I embed you know, uh, a YouTube play video? Well, then other countries won't be able to play it, and the YouTube video might go down or uh, might not be available on mobile, right? So you just drop us in. We're kind of like Stripe for, for audio playback. You drop us in, never have to worry about it again. So we're seeing a lot of really good momentum there. That totally makes sense to me. Um, and then we have a similar uh, value proposition for uh, artists, managers, and labels uh, that we're ramping up our, uh, our um, promotional efforts with. So yeah. the idea is that when I'm you know, Maroon 5 and I have a new track I want to drop to my fan base, you know, what link do I tweet to my followers? If I tweet on iTunes link, well, oftentimes the first time a track is available, it's not available in iTunes yet, it's first on SoundCloud or YouTube. And even if it was, that drives download revenue, great. but. You know, iTunes market share is at a you know eight year low now. Digital music sales declined last year. It's, it's 2014, right? People are moving towards streaming, and so I don't want to cut off all my users if they land on a 30 second preview on iTunes and they don't they don't purchase a the song. They're gonna bounce off and pirate it, right? They're gonna go look for other places to play it. Uh, but a YouTube link doesn't monetize as well. SoundCloud link doesn't monetize at all. The single universal link from Bop allows anyone to stream, watch, or buy regardless of country, device, or music service. And it and, live updates. And do, they give, do you give them a lot of uh, analytics on exactly. how, how many people are, or who's listening, what kind of demographics or stuff? Exactly, like? that's exactly right. So we're a social media tool for artists and managers. And so what we end up doing is with a simple link, you know, today Drake's song might only be available on SoundCloud, and so it'll start playing through that. Tomorrow it'll live update with YouTube. The next week it'll live update with the iTunes link. The next week it'll live update with Spotify and RDO when it's available, those catalogs. They don't have to touch it. And then they get analytics consolidated across the streaming, watching, and buying activities. 
broken down by dimensions like music service, country, device, time of day. We can measure the sharing impact and the downstream sharing that occurred from it. It seems to me that it, as your business uh, matures, that you're gonna um, do things like uh, watch what, who I'm listening to and maybe look for uh, concerts that are gonna be near me from yep. that, that artist to warn me, hey, you know, you listen to Lady Gaga, which I do once in a while. Um, you know, Lady Gaga is going to be at San Jose uh, um, HP Pavilion, uh, I think in September, right? And tickets are available, and here's a, a link to the ticket sales site. Are you thinking of doing stuff like that? I, I think you must have like got a copy of our product roadmap or something, because yeah. uh, you should be reading right off of it. So, no, it makes perfect sense exactly what's on our, on our uh, future roadmap. So, you know, since we are this meta layer that aggregates everything, we can also plug in really cool third-party services like Songkick and Bands in Town and, you know, do partnerships with Ticketmaster and Live Nation and surface, you know, based on what you're actually listening to, what might be relevant for you. And that's exactly the kind of integrations that we will be rolling out shortly. Yeah, and then uh, since Amazon published our book, uh, their uh, recommendations are so good, mm -hmm. you know, because if you buy just one book off of Amazon, they'll say, oh, uh, this book was also bought uh, along with these other books by all these people because they have so much data to surface that context, right? Yep. Um, are you thinking of doing that? Like, hey, you just played Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven. There's uh, uh, seven other bands that you probably would like from that genre, you know? Absolutely. So we, today, we already provide uh, song recommendations for you. Today, it's powered by Equinest, which does a great job. Uh, but we're collecting some really interesting data. So to date, we have streamed over 35 million songs on our platform. Yeah, and that's going to be a drop in a bucket pretty quickly, I think. <laughs> yeah, so um, that 35 million songs, I mean, right now we're streaming over 100,000 songs a day wow. uh, across you know, all of our various properties. And so we're collecting so much amazing data about you know, who plays what and when. And these users are often connected via their social profiles, so we know what their other likes and interests are. Uh, and you know, this kind of delves into the question you didn't ask, which is the business model, right? Yep. So it's a data play, right? Long term, we know not only what's popular and trending in the aggregate, but also what people like down at the individual level and can be able to do things like market to them appropriately or take that anonymized data and package it up and you know, sell it back to the labels to help them understand who their customers are. It's something they don't really even get from iTunes. iTunes is a black box for data and we can yep. actually let them know who their end users and customers are. Well, I was are. thinking, are, are you going to start a community uh, for discussing Lady Gaga, for instance, or with her uh, social media team? You know? uh, that would be an amazing uh, aspect of the, of the product that uh, you know, we'd love to be able to do. Uh, you know, right now, we're, we're actually getting a lot of interesting momentum with uh, running social media campaigns with, uh, with artists and, 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 their, and their managers are coordinating this with us. Uh, and so today, it's, you know, uh, the lightweight, low friction stuff, like utilizing bop links on Twitter and Facebook to you know, engage the fan base and do so in the best monetized way with all the analytics in one place. As well as uh, we've also been um, working on powering music playback even for labels and artists' websites. Yeah. So you might just say to yourself, wait a minute, why do they need someone to power playback for them? Don't they have the content? They own the content, right? They don't want to deal with it. Not only is it a pain to, be, to deal with it, but also they'd like to be able to monetize it, right? Yeah. If they uploaded the MP3 themselves, there's no monetization there. But if they put a Spotify link, then again, very few people can play it. So we can actually help them, you know, take that off their hands, you know, like a, outsource it to us, and we'll do it in a way that's best quality and best monetization. Most of the songs on Spotify are, have never even had a play, which is sort of weird, yep. right? But when you think of the long tail of music, most most music doesn't get played very much. Can you look into that music and do anything to surface or find new bands that we should be listening to? Absolutely, yes. So, you know, since we've got a handle on arguably the broadest catalog available, I mean, if you think about catalog sizes, right? So Pandora has about one million songs in its catalog. That's tiny, right? I mean, yeah. the biggest complaint we hear from, uh, from Pandora users is that there's too many repeats. Well, that's because they have one million songs in their catalog, right? Uh, Spotify is better, they have about 20. Um, you know, iTunes has about uh, you know 40 million songs in their catalog. You know, we're going after the 130 million songs that are available out there across all these different services, right? So you're right that um, there's many songs on Spotify that have never been played. You know what else has never been played on Spotify? Hmm. The Beatles, hmm. because they're not on Spotify. Yep. Right. So um, there's a lot of interesting stuff out there that we want to be able to surface for people, and you know, having these data points across all these different, uh, you know, all these different touch points can enable us to do that.
Very cool. And actually, I, I have something for you. Yeah. Um, I brought a little gift. Yeah. Got you some uh, some Bop t-shirts for you and your Yay. team. So uh, <laughs> you should uh, you know wear it, represent Bop, and um, yeah, I got one for, for everyone on the team. We're probably so. gonna go to Coachella, so I'll wear them there. So. There you go. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Likewise. Thank you.